amen, so that your learning will be complete. Um, this morning, I'm going to talk about Holy Ghost Power 3, and we're going to deal with um, the subject of tongues, about your tongue. Um, I'm going I'm, I'm to have to um, take a step back um, a little bit, because I want to make sure that you understand the importance of this teaching. So I'm going to take the step back just a little bit and kind of deal with some things that I dealt with a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I'm going to go a little bit deep into one principle. Um, and then next week I'll come back and really deal with uh, the speaking in the unknown tongue and, and all of that. But uh, this morning I, I, I need to just teach you a little bit uh, about the power of your tongue. Amen? And, and get you to understand how that the power of God is there. It is available for you. Uh, but you really have to keep a watch over your tongue. Amen. Amen. So uh, the book of Acts, um, chapter number one, I'm going to do a little bit review because I just need to set it up a little bit um, according to, to what I want to minister to you this morning. Amen. Um, Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. It says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Father, I pray now, I'm asking you, God, that you will anoint this word this morning and it would fall upon the good ground of our heart, God. Satan, I bind you. I come against every spirit and every lie of the devil that would try to confuse or try to hinder the word from going forth in Jesus' name. I render you ineffective and powerless right now. Now, God, I'm asking you to move, Lord, upon every hearer today that we would not only be hearers but doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, we agree by saying amen and amen. You may have your seat in his presence. Amen. The Bible tells us that one of the things that he did with his disciples, that um, even though he had walked with his disciples, even though he taught his disciples, that he told them that when he ascended from heaven, that ascended to heaven, he says, you need to wait here. You need to wait for the promise of the Father. And we understand that the promise of the Father is that he says, I will give you power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, we understand and we learn that the word power means dunamis. It means strength. It means ability. It means the power to perform miracles. It means moral power and soul of uh, excellence of soul. And so what God was beginning to get them to understand is that they they needed the Holy Spirit in order for them to do the work that God has called them to do. It is it, it, it will be unfair for God to ask me to do something that he did not give me the power or the ability to do it. Amen. Amen. So I can't should not be in our vocabulary because Paul says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. And so because Christ strengthens me, then he gives me the power. He gives me the ability to overcome anything that has been put into my life. He gives me the power to walk in the excellence of soul. I can control my mouth. I can control my actions. I, I can do it. Why? Because there's a power that is in me that gives me the ability to do it. Amen. And so we have to understand that even as believers, a lot of time we walk around, uh, uh, you know, defeated and, and, and we have little victory over sin and we have uh, poor spiritual progress. We are unfruitful in the things that God told us to do. Our families are falling apart and, and things are just beginning to deteriorate all around us. And as believers, it ought not be so because God has given each and every one of us the power and the ability to overcome every attack of the enemy amen so whether he's attacking my house whether he's attacking my finances whether he's attacking my relationships whether he's attacking my body God has put in me the ability to be able to overcome everything that the enemy has in me amen come on say Holy Ghost power that's the Holy Ghost power that gives you that ability. It's because of the power of the Holy Ghost that I am that I am. You need to understand Paul says I am that I am but by the grace of God. It's not anything I've done. It's because of God's grace that he has bestowed upon me. Amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. That the excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of me. So I recognize that all the things that I do in God is not because of anything in me. It's because the Holy Ghost power dwells 
in me amen i can live right not because of me but because of holy ghost power that is in me amen i can control my mouth i can control my actions not because of me because the holy ghost power that is in me that's the reason why it tells us if you walk in the spirit you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh what does that mean if you walk according to the spirit of god then you will not fulfill your lustful flesh hallelujah the only reason why your flesh have control over you is because you, had not, you are not tapping into the power of the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. And so we have to understand when we begin to look at this, we understand that, that, that God is the power source. And, and, and we begin to realize that our faith is the capacitor and our tongue is the switch. So whatever you need God to change, whatever you need him to do in your life, whatever you're believing God to do in your life, you have to come to the realization there's nothing wrong with God. There's nothing wrong with the power source. God has unlimited power. He can do all things through Christ. He, listen, everything is possible to them that believe. So there's nothing that I'm facing in my life that God does not have the power to deliver me from. There's nothing that is going on in my life that God has not given me the power to overcome. Amen. Amen. So I have to recognize that, that, that the Holy Ghost is, the Holy Ghost power is the power that God gives me and my faith holds the ability for that power to work in my life. And we come to understand that our tongue is what turns the power on. Until I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, the power of my salvation is turned off until I speak it with my own mouth. Amen. So, so we have to recognize that, 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 there, that all spiritual power, I'm not talking about natural power. You have to understand that the natural realm is governed by the spiritual realm. It's not vice versa. You know, we, we think that what we do naturally affects the spiritual, but it is what happens in the spiritual realm is what affects the natural. And so what we have to recognize is that all spiritual power is turned on by the words that I speak. Now, I want to help you this morning because I want to talk about just a few things very briefly because I want to make sure you have a full balance in this teaching. You have to understand that God is not the only power source. Yeah, I'm going I'm to walk slow for a moment. God is not the only power source. What do I mean by that? What do you mean by that, Pastor? There is another power. He's called principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world. There, there is another power. There is another power source that works with the same principle. The same principle that brings you blessings can also bring you cursing. The same principle of tapping into the power source. The same principle of, of filling your capacitor with what the power source has. And speaking out of your mouth what the power source has put in you. Will release a spiritual power in your life. Now my question is, which power has been released in your life because there are two sources God and Satan there are two sources spirit and the flesh good and evil blessings and cursings and what you have to recognize is that you have the power to release spiritual powers in your life now we have to recognize this and we have to understand this before we can even get into the power of, of, of speaking in tongues and really break that down we have to recognize that we have a lot of power by what we say. Amen. Amen. We have a lot of power. In Genesis chapter number 2 verse 7. We understand that God. When he breathed unto the breath of life unto man. That man became a living soul. We understand there that man became a speaking spirit. God says I have made you kings to the most high king. He says when you decree a thing it shall be established. So you have to recognize that there is power in your tongue and depending on what you say is going to depend upon what you have what has been released in your life is going to depend on the words that are coming out of your mouth and don't you fool yourself what you really say is what you really believe 
I don't care how, many, how much you come to church. I don't, I don't care how much you read the Bible. I don't care how much. When the squeeze is on, I'm talking about when it seems like all hell is broken loose in your life. What comes out of your mouth is really what you believe. That's really what the capacitor is made of. So my question is, what power are you releasing? You have to recognize that even, you, listen, you can be a believer or not. It doesn't matter. If you are breathing, then you've received the breath of life. And you are speaking spirit. It doesn't matter whether or not you're saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. You have the power of your tongue. That whatever you say is going to be released into the earth realm. Amen. So you have to control your tongue. Go with me to Proverbs chapter number 18. You have to control your tongue. Because if you don't learn how to control your tongue, then you will not be able to reap the benefits that God has for you in your life. Because how many of you know we're made?